Welcome to worship. Today is Pentecost Sunday. It's the birthday of the church, and so we wear red for Pentecost because red symbolizes the blood of Christ and, and, and God's sacrifice for the world. And we as the church, we're called to be sacrificial in our approach in, in pouring out our gifts, our abilities in serving the world. So we pray that you have a blessed Pentecost and that the Spirit might blow wildly in and around you so that you be set free through this worship experience to live as the heart, hands, and feet of Jesus in the world. We're glad you're here. Enjoy worship. creation. You are the breath of life that holds all things together. By your spirit, you bring life to a hurting world. With your presence, you make all things new. So we ask as we worship, breathe your spirit of life in us and fill us with unbridled desire to thrive as your church, a church that chooses love over fear and hope over despair. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the church. We thank you that on that Pentecost day when the, the, the winds of the Spirit blew wildly in and around the disciples, we pray that that experience would happen to us. May we be so filled with your Spirit that we're driven into the streets driven into the schools, driven into workplaces, driven into wherever you lead us to proclaim that love and life win through the risen Christ. Give us the passion of Peter. Give us the, the courage of John. Give us the, the strength of Mary. Help us to be those people in our world today so that we and all the world may experience real life in Jesus' name. Amen.
The reading for today is from the book of John, chapter 14. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I have found myself lately a little bit stumped. Do you see, I've always been a pretty self-assured person, knowing what I want, what I don't want, what I believe, what I don't believe. And lately, the world has felt more gray. And I've always been able to hold nuance. That isn't it. I just haven't quite felt like I have any clear holding points lately. I don't know if you feel the same. I don't know if it's the pandemic or not, but I've, I've just felt pretty unsure. I've always been someone who deeply believes in the power of people, that most people, given the option, will do good in the world. And the past few years have challenged that for me. On the one hand, I've seen people singing for uh, EMTs, and I've seen people garnering support together to support refugees that are coming to our country. And I've seen Ukraine flags all over Littleton, Colorado. And on the other hand, I've seen people disregard the fact that over a million people in the States have died from COVID. On the other hand, one of my friends was killed by a drunk driver recently. On the other hand, I don't see a lot of people listening to each other, but I see a lot of people writing people off based off even perceived political ideas. And so I don't feel like I have anything to grab onto anymore. If I, if I can't trust this once pillar of my belief system that, that people will be working together for good, but it's not that I can't trust it entirely. People do work together for good. I've been feeling pretty uncertain. There's a pastor in Minnesota recently who said, I get that you don't know what you believe anymore. I get that you don't know what you believe anymore, that things you once held on to feel pretty shaky right now. But we're not going to get it by going backwards. We're not going to figure out what we believe by clinging to what we once believed because that has faded away because our lives and our world have changed what we believe. And rightfully so, our lived experience is supposed to inform what we believe. And so with that in mind, with, with her wise words sort of calming my soul, or at least letting me know that I'm not the only person deeply confused right now. I think it's fitting that we have our one Pentecost, Pentecost text that is gentle. You see, along with my beliefs about people doing good, I've also always preferred the Jesus who's a little bit fiery. I love Pentecost. I love spirit and wind and fire. I was always the kid who wanted to build the bonfire growing up. I love the color red, and I love big and loud actions of God. I've always much preferred Jesus flipping a table to Jesus sitting down and listening to someone because I would much prefer to flip a table. That might not be relatable to you, and, and I get that. I'm, I'm kind of a loud person. That's not something I'm trying to hide about myself. But I think it is fitting that in this time of uncertainty, we get the Gospel of John, the one Pentecost uh, Gospel text that is gentle, 
where Jesus describes the Holy Spirit as an advocate. And he tells people once again to love the, the commandment he says here. He says, keep my commandments. The only commandment Jesus gives in the gospel of John is to love. So when he says, keep my commandments, we need to forget all the other commandments we know from the Bible and remember that it's just about love. And he, he says that the Holy Spirit will come and be an advocate who knows truth. And he ends the verses saying, peace I give to you and peace I live, leave with you. We have a very gentle spirit in this text. And yes, we have these other wonderful texts about the Holy Spirit being fire and wind and loud, but today we sit with a gentle spirit. With the Holy Spirit that comes to advocate for people. And anyone who's ever advocated for their kid because they weren't getting what they needed or, or for different rights at work or whatever they might be advocating for. I know I advocated a lot for ice cream as a child. Whenever you advocate, you start with the gentle, right? You start with the request. You're, you're feeling out what might happen. And so Jesus is saying that the Holy Spirit is here and it starts gentle. It sees truth and it, it starts by just saying, hey, what if you cared a little bit more for other people? And we might get to the fire, right? Advocacy can sometimes become a really big thing because when you're advocating for something, especially for someone, it matters that you get justice. But the Holy Spirit here is starting with the prodding. And so for those of us who might not quite know what to do nowadays, I think we are called to listen to that prodding. We're called to sit in quiet spaces, whether that is a literal, physical quiet space or just wherever our heart feels quiet. And we're called to listen for God's prodding, for where the Holy Spirit might be advocating that we spend our time. Because not everything is worth our time, especially in this really loud world where people don't seem to be very gentle. A lot of debates or arguments or reading and researching certain topics. That's something I get caught up in a lot. I go down a lot of rabbit holes because I want to know everything. Might not be worth our time. So when we are called to listen to the Holy Spirit, when we say that uh, the communion of the Holy Spirit is to be with you, what we are hoping for you, what we are blessing you with, is that you'll be listening to that prodding. And the more we listen to that prodding, the more we trust that that advocate is out prodding and listening for us as well, prodding others to listen for our needs as well. We have a very gentle Holy Spirit this morning. And Jesus says that this Holy Spirit is is here so that they will know that they are still with God. The disciples will trust that Jesus is still with him because in John and in all the gospels, it's not that Jesus leaves us, full stop, end of story, but Jesus leaves us with the Holy Spirit and Jesus is still present in our world. If you notice during our Easter proclamation this year, and I think for a few years past at Abiding Hope, we say Christ is risen because Jesus rose from the dead, right? Proving that God conquers death, that love and life win. And then we say, I am risen because the Christ is risen in us. Because when we are baptized into life with God, there is a part of us that is risen with Jesus. There's a part of us that is in tune with the Holy Spirit. There's a part of us that is called to advocate for our, for our loved ones, for other people in the world who don't have what they need. And then we say, we are risen. We are risen together with Jesus. So when Jesus leaves earth and gives us the Holy Spirit, he is leaving us the Holy Spirit, which is connected to God, which is connected to Jesus, which prompts us on who to advocate for. And then the body that acts that out, the body that is Jesus now, today, and 2000 years ago, that is us. That is the community of Christ followers. That is the people on earth. We are not called to do it perfectly. That was never a thing that Jesus told us to do. But we are called to act out Jesus' work. That the Holy Spirit might prompt us into those places that need extra love, hope, peace, kindness, gentleness, justice. And that we might be Jesus' body. 
You see, Jesus doesn't leave us. He just changes the way that he acts in the world. And so as we are advocated for on behalf of the Holy Spirit, as the Holy Spirit sends love on our behalf into the world, when when we have needs, the Holy Spirit advocates that those get met, which is a little bit different when we think of why bad things happen in the world. It's a little bit different than a God who just changes things, right? We don't have a God that writes laws. We have a God that advocates on our behalf, that works with us for love and life in our lives and in everyone's life in our world. We have the Holy Spirit that's doing the advocating and our job is to listen and to put that advocating into action. To be the hands and feet of Jesus. We say it all the time. But I think sometimes we forget when we are the hands and feet of Jesus, we're not the brain of Jesus. That guiding path is the Holy Spirit. So if you haven't heard the Holy Spirit a whole lot lately, like me, trust me, there's no judgment there. Maybe find a place to listen. Maybe spend some time thinking about where gentleness and love might sneak into our world. Maybe identify the places in our world that don't feel gentle and figure out where how you might be gentle towards them. I don't know what that looks like for you. But for me, I think it spends a, means spending a whole lot more time in conversation and just ignoring some arguing. For me, I think it looks like being gentle towards myself when I don't get my to-do list done and then being gentle towards others when they don't get their to-do list done either. For me, I think it means looking at pain in the world and allowing it to affect me and not worrying about the fact that I don't have time or that I think it might break me. Maybe a rising to love and hope for us this season means being gentle. We chose the word arise for, for Easter because it's a coming up out of something. And I love that it had action involved. But maybe it's arising our hearts to listen. Maybe it doesn't involve a whole lot of action at all. May you listen to the Holy Spirit this week. Amen.
Let us pray. God of new life, we come seeking evidence of your presence in our lives. We trust that your love and grace is enough to help us rise above all that keeps us weighed down. So as we pray, stir your spirit in us, fill us with peace, and inspire us with your compassion. We lift to you the brokenness within our creation, those who are lonely and afraid, how our world is changing with global climate change, as there's a a water crisis here in the West, in Colorado. We need your help, Lord. Lord, we lift our prayers for peace and restoration. We lift up those throughout the world seeking relief from war, conflict, and hopelessness. The scenes that we see coming from the Ukraine are devastating, heartbreaking. But we also know that there's war and conflict, not just in nations, sometimes in homes, in neighborhoods, in communities, in schools. Lord, we lift our prayers for peace and restoration. We pray for those struggling with the stresses of life that keep them from experiencing your love and joy. We know that there are so many people today suffering from anxiety, depression. There are young people contemplating whether or not to end their lives. Lord, we need your help. We lift our prayers for peace and restoration. We lay ourselves before you in prayer for the ways with which we are broken, weighed down and challenged. Life is hard. Family is hard. Work is hard. Everything feels difficult today. So be with us, help us. Lord, we lift our prayers for peace and restoration. Gracious God, we give you thanks for your love, which consistently restores the broken, revives the empty and renews the hopeless. Stir us now to arise and be people of love and restoration in your creation, using our gifts in ways that bring love and life to all. In the name of Jesus, amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please take a moment and share a sign of peace with those who are with you and get out those phones and devices and send messages of peace to your friends and family. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As God's family, we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. It's Pentecost. Happy birthday, church. This is the birthday meal for the church. When we come together and we're reminded that we are part of God, part of each other, part of all of the creation. This feast is intended to fill us and fuel us to go out into the world, to our homes, to our workplaces, to our schools, neighborhoods, and beyond to be the hard hands and feet of Jesus so that all people may experience real life. May we all be fed with this wonderful gift. Now, if you're by yourself, I'll say the words for you, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. And if you have others there, everyone is invited to the meal for the gifts of God are free.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. God's spirit is stirring in us and leading us to something new. Rise up and engage wherever the spirit might be leading you toward new opportunities for choosing love and hope. Love God, serve God, love all, serve all. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.